All right, Algebra 2, we're doing our Unit 6 review. I'm going to go over every problem on the review. So uh, you look at this video as you do your review and maybe, uh, maybe you'll have some good success. Anyway, starting off here at number one. Simplify this expression. Okay, in the top expression, we see everything in here is to the third power. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to, I've got four to the third power, I got x squared to the third power, and I have y to the third to the third power. All those are to the third power. All right, so uh, four to the third power is 64. x squared to the third power, two times three would be six, so it'd be x to the six, and then three times three is nine, that'd be y to the nine. Okay. In the bottom of this expression, we see a multiply there, and we've got uh, things we can multiply. So like here, here we got eight times four, which is 32. Uh, we have x to the third times x to the fourth, so three plus four would be seven. That's x to the seven. <clears throat> and then uh, y to the fourth and y to the fifth, four plus five is nine, so it'd be y to the nine. All right, so that's what I get when I multiply those. And now I divide, so 64 divided by 32 is two. X to the sixth divided by X to seven, I subtract these, so seven minus six is one, and it'd be in the bottom, because there's more in the bottom, so I've got X to the one down here. And then Y9, Y9, those just cancel. So it should be two over X, which looks like B. Okay, two rules. that you have to know x to the third to the fourth power is x to the 12, okay? When you have a power of a power, you multiply those. Now, if you have x to the third times x to the fourth, this is x to the seven. <clears throat> this is a product of powers. All right, so these are the two main rules that you have to know to do this kind of a problem. All right, number two. Classify this polynomial by its degree and by the number of terms. All right, so we see here's got three terms. So that's going to make it a trinomial, which all these say trinomial. Okay, now we look at the degree, which is to the fifth power here. That's the highest degree. So that's quintic. Quintic. Quintic trinomial. Uh, Quartic is to the fourth degree. This would be x to the fourth. Cubic would be x to the third. Quadratic is x squared. So uh, we had notes we took over this. If you need more help on that, just let me know. Number three. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, if an even degree polynomial has a function if a degree, even degree polynomial function has a negative leading coefficient, which graph could represent this function? Well, if it has a negative leading coefficient, that means it's like a negative x to the fourth or negative x second. It's even, so we know it's, this number is even, the exponent. <clears throat> but it could be this one right here. Because see, if it's negative, that means the right side is going down. So you see the right side's going down, and this is even, because they're both going down. All these other ones are odd. So it would have to be this one, okay? This right here would be an odd function, and see the, <clears throat> see that's going down? That would have a negative leading coefficient too. And this one would too. Now this one would be a positive leading coefficient because it's going up on the right, okay? Number four. All right, simplify this expression below, give your answer in standard form. All right, we're subtracting. So when you subtract, you want to distribute that minus into, these, into this expression, to all these terms here, and change it to plus. So this five becomes a negative five that turns this into a plus x squared, a plus five x to the third, and then a minus six x. And now we can add our like terms together. You don't want to subtract because that'll cause you some mistakes. So starting with my highest power, I've got uh, <clears throat> right here, x to the three and x to the three, those go together. So negative three plus 
a positive 5 is a positive 2x to the 3. Okay. <clears throat> Next exponent would be uh, x squared. Looks like I just have this 1x squared right here, so plus x squared. Okay. Then uh, x term. All right, here's an x term. And here's an x term. So we do 8 plus negative 6, which is a positive 2x. And then my, <coughs> my constant terms, excuse me, these two are my constant terms. So I got 12 plus a negative 5. See, there's a negative right there. That'd be a 7. And I think we're looking at B. All right. But you need to distribute your minus when you're subtracting like that and then add. That'll cause you less trouble. Number five. Okay, we want to multiply these. Simplify the expression. So now to do this, I'm going to make me a box. So I'm just going to come over here at the box. And I'm going to have n to the third on top plus 3n squared. On the side, I've got n squared minus 4n and then plus 5 on the side. And then each square is a product. So like right here, this one, this is n to the third times n squared, which would be n to the five. Right here, three times one would be three, and then I've got n to the fourth. And in here, I got one times negative four, which is negative four, and that would be n to the fourth. So I got three there and one there, so three plus one would be four. Right here, negative four times three would be negative 12, and that'd be n to the third. I got one there and two there, which is three. Going on down, this would be uh, 5n to the third, and this would be 15n squared. Okay. Now look for your like terms and see here's like terms there, n to the fourth, and here's these are like terms, n to the third. So it looks like I've got this n to the five, and I've got three plus negative four, which is negative n to the fourth. Then I have negative 12 plus 5, which is negative 7 n to the third. Then I have plus 15 n squared. Okay, and that looks like B. All right, number six. Which of the following describes the end behavior of this function below? All right, look at your leading coefficient, leading term, which is x to the third. It's positive, so that means on the right side it goes up. But since it's an odd power, the left side must go down. So there's what my end behavior looks like. Now notice this right here. Check all that apply. We're going to have two answers on this because we've got this side and this side to, to do. All right, so on this one, since we're going negative infinity here, as x goes to negative infinity, what does the function do? It goes down to negative infinity. All right, so as x goes to negative infinity, this goes, all right, there's d right there. Okay, now on this side, as we go to positive infinity, as x approaches positive infinity, what does the function do? It's going up to positive infinity. So that looks like a, there you go, there's my two answers. Okay, number seven. During which interval is the function below increasing? All right. On this, now I didn't, I didn't get my uh, Desmos ready. I forgot about it. Uh, but we want to do this on Desmos. Type this in. And then we want to look at the function. Uh, let me see if I can get this going here. I may have to come back to number seven. But on this, when you graph it, I'll just graph what it looks like, I think. It, uh, okay, I believe it. Looks like this right here. This is what the graph looks like once you do it on Desmos. And then you click this point right here. <clears throat> and this point is negative two, uh, something i don't know what this next number is and this point right here is one 
something. I don't know. Okay. I may be off on these points, but anyway, let's we'll just look at it like this. And so, when is this increasing? Increasing is when, when it goes left to right, it's going uphill. This is increasing. So right here, this is increasing right here, all the way up to this point right there. Because as you're going over to the from left to right, it's going uphill. So that's at negative two. So from negative infinity to negative two, so that'd be this one. Okay, then it starts decreasing right there. But now right here, it starts going up again. So this is increasing, which starts at one. So this goes from one to infinity right there. This means x is between, x is some number between one and negative infinity. So that'd be my two answers there. Okay, now you may graph this on Desmos and it may have different numbers there, but I just made these up for that one. I didn't have my Desmos going. All right, let's go to this next one here. The graph of polynomial function has zeros of three, multiplicity of two, and negative three, multiplicity of one. Write a function in standard form that could represent this function. Okay, so you have zeros of three with multiplicity of two, so that's x minus three, and it's squared because it's multiplicity of two. Then you have one at negative three, which is x plus three, and that's multiplicity of one. And so basically, I want to just multiply these together. All right, so <clears throat> if I do x minus 3 squared, well, let me just put x minus 3 over here, and I'll just multiply it up. So this is x squared. This is negative 3x, negative 3x, and then 9. So that's x squared minus 6x. These go together, which gives me 6x and plus 9. So there's what I get for this. Now, I still need to multiply that this one. Alright, so let's we'll build this little box right here. Bring x plus 3 over here to the side. Okay, so this looks like x to the third. This looks like negative 6x squared. This looks like 9x, 3x squared, negative 18x, and then 27. Okay, so I have x to the third. These are like terms, so negative six plus three is negative three x squared. These two are like terms, nine plus negative 18 is negative nine x, and then I have 27. Okay, that looks like D. So D's my answer. Okay, go to this number nine. Factor this completely. All right, so we have 18 x to the five minus 32 x. Now, if you look at this, they both have an x. So I can factor out an x. And then uh, there's a number that goes into these. Let's see, 18 and 32. Uh, I guess just two. Two goes into 18 nine times, and then x to the fifth divided by x, it would be x to the fourth. Minus 32 divided by two is 16, and the x divides out. So that's what I have. So we see that right here, b, but I don't think that's fully uh, factored because we've got a difference of squares here. This is this is uh, three x squared squared, and this is four squared. So I can break that down into a uh, difference of squares. This two x comes down here. The square root of nine is three, so it'd be three and three. The square root of x to the fourth would be x squared and x squared. The square root of sixteen is four, four and four. One of these is plus, one of them is minus. So uh, that looks like C. Okay. Number 10. Okay, factor this completely. All right, if you look, they both have an X, so I can factor that X out. And uh, this is some of the cubes here. See there? This is x to the third power, and this is four to the third power. Okay, if you're not sure, you just do the third power of it to see if it is. Uh, what you can do here is type 64, and then do to the uh, one divided by three. Uh oh. And it comes out to be four. Okay, just do. 64 to the 1 divided by 3 power, which is a third power. So that tells you that's 4. So this is going to be x plus 4. This x comes down. 
which means I'm going to have x squared, and then I'm going to have uh, minus 4x, and then we'll have plus 16. Now, if you're not sure about that, if you're not sure what this is, because I think, you know, since this is 4, this is going to be 4, and that's going to be 4 squared. And since this is plus, that's going to be minus. But if you're not sure, you can do synthetic division here. So just write your, <clears throat> see when I factor this x out, I get x to the third. So that's a, a mistake. So I got a, a one, I've got no x squared, I've got no x term, and then I got a 64. And I'm gonna put right here, my factor is negative four, so I'm, or my factor is four, so I'm gonna put a negative four for my zero. And do a little synthetic division. So basically, what I'm doing now is I'm taking this right here. This is 1x to the third. I've got no x squared. I've got no x term. I've got the 64. And I'm going to divide by my zero of that factor, which is negative 4. All right, the 1 comes down. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. I add these. And then i got a number down here. I do negative 4 times negative 4, which is 16. And I add these. And I do it again. Negative 4 times 16 is negative 64. And I add those, which is a big zero. Okay, which is what it's supposed to be. And so see, I got the one x squared, I got the minus four x, and I got the plus 16. So it looks like B. Okay. Number 11. Factor this polynomial. All right, well, it looks like six, 15, and 36. Looks like three goes in all those. And they all have an x, so it looks like I can divide that out. So 6 divided by 3 would be 2. I've got an x to the third. I've divided an x out, so that knocks it down to x squared. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. I've got x squared, but I'm dividing out of x, so that's going to make that just an x term. Then I have negative 36 divided by 3, which is negative 12, and the x is divided out. So that's what I have there. And you see that on b here, but I believe that factors down further. Now remember, since there's a number in front here, 2 times 12 is 24. Okay. So 24 divided by 1 is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 24 divided by 5 is a decimal. And then 6 is over there, and that's all my options. Now, since this is a minus, I need to subtract and get 5. Subtract my two numbers and get 5. Right there is my two numbers. So yeah, this does factor. So I've got this 3x in front, and I want to forget him. I've got a 3 and an 8 here. Okay, and x times x is x squared, but because of that 2 in front, i got to divide both of these by 2. And this sign right here goes to the bigger one. And the last sign tells me since it's negative, I have to have a positive and a negative. I already got a negative, so that must be a positive. All right, so there's what I get when I factor it, but I can't have the fractions in there. So to fix that, I've got this 3x here, let's see here. This uh, won't simplify, so the two will come over in front of the x. So there you go. And then eight divided by two is four, so it's gonna be x minus four. So there's what I should have. And that's c. Okay. Factor this one completely. All right, we're going to group these together because there's no, like, there's nothing that goes in all of them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them two together. And since that's a minus, I'm going to keep that in here and put a plus. I'll group those two together. Okay, so if I look at these two, 10 and 5, 5 goes in both of those. And they both have a Y. So I can factor that out. So if I do it, 10 divided by 5 is 2. I've got an X. I'm not dividing it out. But my Y divides out. Minus 5 divided by 5 is 1, and the y is divided out. So there's what I get when I do that grouping. Now here, since this first number is negative, I'm going to have to bring out a negative. And uh, 3 goes in both of them. So negative 6 divided by 3 is a positive 2, and I've got the x coming through. And then 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1. And look, miraculously, these two numbers match. 
which means I have 5y times it here, and I got negative 3 times it there, so both of these are times this. All right, so... Uh, Okay, I made a mistake here. This should be an x. No, that's right. No, that's right. 5y minus 3. 2x minus 1. There it is. I, I thought I made a mistake, but I didn't. All right, good deal. All right, number 13. Find the quotient of this. All right, we're going to do synthetic division. So first, make sure you don't skip any terms. we got a 2, 1, and a 0. So we're not skipping any terms. So it's a 5 negative seven, negative four. Over here, my zero goes that, and here's my factor, which means my zero is negative two. Okay, there we go. Now to do this, the five comes down. Once I get it over here, negative two times five is negative 10. I add these, negative 17. Once I get it over here, I multiply it by negative two, which is 34. I add these, which is 30. All right, so this is my remainder. This is going to be one degree less. This was x squared, so this is 5x minus 17 plus 30 over my divisor, x plus 2. And that should be it right there, 5x. Uh, right there, b. Okay. Find the quotient here. I'm going to do it again. So look, let's see if we're missing any terms. 4 and a 2. Oh, yeah, we're missing a x3. And that's all we're missing. So when I do this now, two, I gotta put a zero for the X3 term since it's missing. And so there's all my coefficients. Now I got X minus two is my factor, which means X equals positive two is my zero. All right, so this two comes down. Two times two is B4, and I add those, which is four. Once I get a number here, multiply by two, so four times two is eight. I add these, I get three. Okay, once I get it over here, 2 times 3 is 6. I add those, which is 3. Once I get it over here, I times it by that, so that's going to be 6. I add those, I get 5, and that's my remainder. Okay, this should be 1 degree less, so since that's the 4th, this is 2x to the 3rd plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 3, and then plus my remainder over the divisor, which is x minus 2. Oops, this remains are right there. Let's see here. C. Okay. Number 15. Okay, use these functions here to find F plus H. So here's F plus, and then here's H over here. I'm going to add those together. So start with my highest power. This is a plus, so we don't have to do any changing. It's if it's a minus, we do changing. But my highest power looks like x squared. All right, then my next would be uh, x term. And these two are here. So negative 1 plus negative 6. Or negative 5 is negative 6. And then I got this uh, minus 8. So that should be it right there. 2... Yeah, here it is, D. All right. On um, 16 here, use these functions to find F or G times F. All right, so we're going to do G, which is 3 minus 2X, times F, which is X squared minus X. So we'll multiply those, which I'm just going to build a box. All right, so right here, three times x squared is three x squared. Three times negative x is negative three x. X squared times negative two x would be negative two x to the third. And right here, negative two x uh, times negative two x. So negative one times negative two is a positive two, and that's gonna be x squared. All right, so it looks like I've got my highest power here, negative two x to the third. And then these two go together, that's gonna be three plus two, that's gonna be five x squared and then minus 3x. So that should be my answer right there. Looks like B. Okay. 
number 17. Find the zeros of this. All right, look here. Since that's my factor, x equals negative three is my zero. Since that's my factor, x equals positive five is my zero. So there's my zeros. But this one's to the second power and this one's to the fourth power. So let's see here, negative two. No, negative three down here. Negative three, multiplicity of two. So both of these are right. And this would be a positive five. Multiplicity of four, so it looks like D. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? Determine which binomial factor is this. Okay. Well, the easiest thing would be to just divide synthetic division until you get one that divides it. So we've got a one, a negative two, we're not skipping any terms, negative 16, positive 32. Well, let's try to, uh, this would be negative two. See if this first one works. So when I do this, one comes down, negative two times one is negative two, add those negative four. Negative two times negative four is a positive eight, that'd be negative eight. Negative two times negative eight is 16, and that didn't work. All right, so we have one, negative two, negative 16, 32. Let's do four, right here, this one. All right, so one comes down, four times one is four, add those two. Four times two is eight, add those, negative eight. Four times negative eight is negative 32, and look at there, man, we did it. All right, so, so yeah, this one looks like it's a uh, factor because it ends up with a zero here. All right, number 19. Find all the zeros of this function here. All right, it's to the fourth power, so I need to add 100 to both sides. Which gives me x to the fourth, minus 29x plus 100. Okay. Oh, that's square right there, I ripped it off. And if you notice, this is x4, that's x2, the exponents are doubled. Which means if when I factor this, I'm gonna have x squared plus or minus something. Okay, so let's take my 100. 100 divided by one is 100. 100 divided by two is 50. 100 divided by three is decimal. Four and 25. Six doesn't go. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 10. Okay. Now, since we've got us a plus in front of that 100, I need to add these numbers. And I'm supposed to get 29 right there, 4 and 25. So this is a 4, that's a 25. Now let's put my signs in. This sign here goes to the big one every time. This last sign being a plus tells me that these signs are the same, so that's minus. Okay. And then what we have here, this is a difference of squares. This is x squared, that's two squared. So x and two, x and two, one's plus, one's minus. This is x squared, this is five squared, so. These are x squareds here. Oh no, 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 they're not. So this is x and five, x and five, one's plus and one's minus. So we have negative two and two, negative five and five, which is D. Okay. Number 20. Write a polynomial function in standard form with zeros two, negative three, and five. All right, so if two is a zero, that means X minus two is a factor. If negative three is a zero, X plus three is my factor. And if that's a zero, X minus five. So I'm gonna multiply those together and see what I get, okay? So if I do these, okay, just make a little box here. X plus three, X squared minus two X, three X, negative six. And those go together, which would be X squared plus X and then minus six. All right, which means that's the product of these two. Okay, now I gotta take this one and bring it down 
and multiply them together. So I'll just build me a box here. Put x minus 5 on the side. This would be x to the third. x squared, negative 6x, negative 5x squared, negative 5x, and then 30. Okay, these two go together and those two go together. So I'm looking at x to the third. 1 plus negative 5 is negative 4x squared. Negative 6 plus negative 5 is negative 11x plus 30. That's A. All right, and last one. Find the graph of this equation here. Okay. Uh, right there, that's x equals 0. Right here, that's x equals negative 3. And right there, that's x equals positive 3. Okay, now if you notice, this middle one's squared, which means it's multiplicity 2. Which means it's going to touch the axis and turn back down, or touch it and go back up. Okay, so... Uh, I'm kind of thinking it's this one right here. Because see, we got this negative 3... One, two, three, and see how it bounces back off of the axis? We've got positive three over here, which means it goes through positive three, then it goes through zero. So I think we're in good shape. And it's this one. Okay, so there you go, that's unit six review. If you have any questions, you know, contact me and I'll try to help you and try to talk you through it. Otherwise, have a great rest of the day and, and do good on your test. Bye-bye.